Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to your C Sharp series. This video, we're gonna be talking about lists inside of C Sharp. Super helpful thing, especially if you're coming from arrays and you need something a little bit more dynamic. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. So the primary benefit of using a list is that when you fill it, you can resize it. It's all done behind the scenes. So you can just keep adding to this list. And if it outgrows it, it's all going to be done behind the scenes, creating a new one, copying your elements over or whatever else needs to happen. So functionality wise, it's very similar to an array. You can iterate through it. You can access it using indexes and so forth, but it's just a little bit easier to work with. So what might this look like? Well, let me write out how to create a list. You're gonna say list and then use the less than greater than signs and put a type in here. So anytime you see these signs, the less than greater than, think generic. And what that means is it's a type of programming. We're gonna probably get into that later on in the series generic programming where you can basically create a class. In this case, the class was called list and the class was written in a way to work with various types and the person who's using that class can insert the type here. So it's basically a class that's written in a generic way to work with a variety of different types. That's a lot of detail and you can study generic programming if you want to get into that, if you want to create your own generic classes. But for now, all we need to know is when we see that less than and greater than sign like this, we substitute a type in there, in this case, an integer. Then we can give it a name and assign it a value like so. So we do it again down here and then we use the parentheses. Now notice there's nothing about size here. We don't have to worry about that. We can just add elements into this list. To do that, all you do is use the identifier and then use a method called add. And the thing you wanna add goes inside the parentheses such as the value five. That's going to put that into the first spot of the list. So it's gonna look something like five. But we don't actually have to worry about the size here. It could be just one element, it could be more. All we have to worry about is that our element is in there. We can get the number of elements we have in there using a property count. So to use that, we would say grades.count. This is going to return a number. In this case, it's going to return one because there's one element inside the list. You can access individual spots with normal indexing. So you could say grades index zero. That's going to grab this position right here. There's also a variety of other methods you can use to work with lists. And we're gonna get some hands-on practice working with them in the next video. So be sure to check that out. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Really, 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 really helps me out and I really appreciate it. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.